Hi everyone and welcome back to the shack for the final part in this build of a brand new ZX Spectrum with almost entirely new parts including these SRAM based lower and upper RAM boards, this replacement ULA, a new switchable ROM and a brand new Z80 and logic chips. In fact the only part for a new Spectrum that isn't readily available is this LM1889 chip. We had some issues with the S video board so I replaced that with this composite modded modulator box from my Spectrum Plus and although inside it is all new it doesn't really fit with the rest of the board and doesn't have that look at me I'm all shiny and new feel about it. So before we do anything else while the intro rolls we'll swap that out for this much more fitting composite mod that works without the need for the external box to ground it. Ok roll the intro. Here at the shack we'd like to give a huge thank you to the sponsor for this video PCB Way. They help us out with all of our PCB fabrication needs and make fantastic boards at amazingly competitive prices and it's not only PCBs that are on the menu. Apart from other fabrication services like CNC machining, 3D printing, sheet metal fabrication and injection moulding PCB Way also have a great projects library of cool stuff to build from people all around the world. Oh, and if you don't like waving a soldering iron about they can even assemble your PCBs for you. That's the PCB way. Right on with the show. Well that's much much nicer and the whole thing looks amazing. I'm really pleased with how that's turned out. We also built this mechanical keyboard which whilst it looks and feels amazing it's difficult to use on a 48k Spectrum because it doesn't have all the different basic keywords printed on it so we need to do something about that. Finally I wanted to ensure that this really was as brand new as I could get it so that meant designing a new case as well. Now I'm not the first person to do this and I did consider using Lee Smith's excellent ZX Metrum case which looks amazing and is well worth a look as a complete unit or you can download the STL files to print yourself or get PCB way to print them for you if you don't have access to a 3D print of your own. However. I'm an idiot so I decided to have a bit of a what if moment and I considered what if Sinclair had won the opportunity to represent the government's computer literacy project in the early 80s rather than Acorn with the BBC Micro. What if there was a BBC Spectrum 48k that had landed in schools, what would that have looked like? Taking the BBC Micro as a base wedge design I tinkered about in Tinkercad and came up with this. I decided to take my own advice and get PCB Way to print it for me using their 3D printing service. I chose my material and a few days later this arrived in the post. The quality is exceptional and I think it captures that classic wedge shape really nicely. Now the big question is how good was my measuring and designing skills? Will the spectrum fit? Ok full disclosure on this I went into it thinking how hard can it be and the fact is that this designing lark is actually quite complicated. I made some immediately obvious stupid mistakes such as thinking about adding in the supports for the main board but not thinking about how I might actually get a screw in there. Quite what I was thinking about this little overhang I'll never know that needs to come off but fair play to PCB way for making a good job of it. Let's pop the main board in and see what other mistakes I've made. Well at first glance it looked like an ok fit with holes about where holes need to be. However the old square peg in a round hole has caught me out here. The bottom of the power barrel jack is square and the hole on the case is round. So let's grab a small file and see if we can square off that hole a bit. There that should do it. While I was at it I removed the overhang as well. Now let's see if the board fits and yes that looks a lot better. With the barrel jack now fitting properly we can see that the holes on the main board now match up with the support pillars I put on the case. Nice! 
I've popped some screws in here to hold the board in place and had to add a little washer underneath because my pillars were around a millimetre too short. Let's see if we can plug something into the edge connector because I'm a little concerned that the rear wall of the case is too thick. We'll use this digital tape player and joystick interface from you make robots and yes it does go on albeit perhaps it could do with a couple more millimetres of travel. But I'll take that for now. Popping the top cover on we can see that the other ports are lined up enough to access them but there's certainly room for improvement. So let's pop the keyboard in and see how that looks. Just slot the keyboard in there, pop in the surround, and I think that looks absolutely amazing. Yep, I think I'd be happy with that if that was the BBC Spectrum, although there are some improvements we need to make. For example, these headers on the keyboard are too long. There's not enough room in the case to put the header wires on. So we'll replace these with right angle header pins so that the wires come out sideways rather than downwards. I'm also a little concerned that the keyboard header pins on the main board may be a bit long too, but we'll see when we get to that bit. Here's our right angle header pins in place and they're a much better choice. From the rear, we can see there's hopefully just enough clearance to get the wires through. Speaking of wires, I got these much shorter ones to reduce the clutter in the case and increase airflow. Now, I'm going to have to rethink about this at some point as I had to remove all of the plastic from the header wires in order to be able to fit the cables through over this lower RAM board and also on the main board end. For now though, it works, so we'll press on. Popping the keyboard surround in place and putting the rear cover on, we can move our attention to the keyboard itself. As mentioned before, it feels great and it works really well, but on the Spectrum 48K, you enter basic commands through a series of key presses for all keywords. Some of these are easy to remember, such as P for print, others such as restore aren't so easily found and require combinations of keys to access. So we're going to be popping these keycap stickers on the keys. This pack is intended for use with PC emulators, so is designed to fit PC keyboard keycaps. There are stickers here for the ZX80, 81 and Spectrum rubber key and plus models. Putting them on is simple enough, if a little time consuming, but take your time and you'll do a better job than me, no doubt. Peel a sticker off, centre it on the required keycap and then square it up, press down firmly and you're done. Just another 39 to go. Well, that looks very pretty and adds a much needed dash of colour to the project. But I still want to add a dash of colour to the case as well. Luckily, I thought about that when I was designing the case and I put in these four strips here, not only for strength, but so that we could do this. Now, I don't know about you, but I think that would have looked nice sitting on the desks at school in my what if universe. Having the removable top case could have made it easy to change ROMs like in the BBC Micro. And if this had been made in metal, it could have easily been used as a monitor stand too. Let's pop some rubber feet on the bottom while we're here and then we'll fire it up. It's hard to describe just how much better this feels than a standard Spectrum keyboard, any other Spectrum keyboard. They have their charm of course, but this makes the Spectrum feel more modern and more usable. Everything works out in the diagnostics and that means we're finally at the end of this journey and it's been an absolute blast to get this project done. With the channel approaching 30,000 subscribers, I want to do something special with this machine, so I've decided to give it away. So look out for a little competition in a couple of weeks time, where one lucky winner could get this absolute one of a kind Spectrum 48K. Flipping the switch to the alternative ROM, we can use this lovely machine for what it was intended, programming. Anyway, thanks for joining me over the past few weeks. Please like the video and help the channel to grow and please subscribe if you like this sort of silliness. Please leave your comments below, we'd love to know what you think of this, 
perfection or tragedy? Is this what you think of if you think BBC Spectrum 48K? Many thanks to PCBWay for their support on this and my many other builds, and until next time in the shack, it's goodbye from me.